there Document Geeks, Gary Bradley here from Creative Frontiers and in this video I'm going to show you how you can create gradients inside of InDesign that will allow you to mix two or more colours together in a linear or radial fashion. Now the way that you create gradients between the different Adobe apps is ever so slightly different and I'm going to show you how that process works. There is now, since the 2019 Creative Cloud version came out, a new way that you can create gradients as well. So I'll take you through both options. You can then decide for yourself which you prefer. And um, to do that, then I'm going to select my object here, which is going to be the focus of my first gradient. Uh, I have white text on this uh, gray background in here. And I want to add a bit of a pop of color in there. So to create gradients, you'll need to go to the window menu, go down to the color submenu, and then choose the gradient panel, of course, is the primary place where you make and uh, edit your gradients. And then go back to window, then to color, and then open up the color panel to be able to specify what those colors look like. Now, it's not absolutely necessary, but I am gonna also go to the window menu and open up the swatches panel because I'm gonna refer back to it now and again, just to show you some of the things that will happen along the way as we make this gradient. Now, I tend to dock together my gradient and my color panel just so they stay together and because they work so intrinsically, it doesn't seem as though they would, but they do in this case. So once you've selected your object, you need to make sure the right attribute is active, which is my fill in this case here, is active. I'll then left click on the thumbnail for the gradient to apply the basic Adobe gradient, which shows us white in my object on the left hand side, transitioning nice and smoothly all the way across the far right hand side when it becomes black. That is also shown in the gradient panel in the editor. So you have two colors that define it as we now know. On the left hand side, I have the white color stop as it's called. And um, over on the right hand side, we have black for the other color stop. They have locations, so you can move them around and change the appearance of the gradient. Um, in here, for example, if I double click on the location of 100%, which is characterized on the right hand side, I can say type in 50 and press return, and it moves it halfway along the gradient. You will notice then that also that edits the object itself, and now the black occupies more inside of the gradient and the object. Anything that essentially precedes that color will be set to that color itself. And the same is true of white. If I click and drag and click on that color stop and move it in towards the middle of the gradient, then now you'll see that we have something close to a black and white rectangle. And the transition though this time is much more severe because it happens over a shorter distance. So those are kind of some of the basic things you can do in a gradient to alter the influence of one color and another and where it's positioned. So I'm just going to set that back over here to the far left hand side and then the black to the far right hand side. To alter the colors, I'll left click on the color stop here for the white one, go down here to my CMYK fields and then type in my own color in here, which will be 43, hit the tab key to go into the next field, zero, then 48, and then finally again, zero, and then press return. So I get this kind of light green color in here. I then will go across the right hand side and left click on that black color stop. This is where we tend to run into problems because we now no longer have CMYK sliders. It all kind of looks very grayed out and inaccessible. The reason for that is that the gradient is used in a specific save black. It's actually shown here in the swatches panel. So it's highlighted because the color stops active. And then you're thinking, well, how on earth do I add color to this color stop? Well, it's done in the color panel naturally, but you have to go to the panel flight menu and click on CMYK to then see the four different sliders show the same black. If I click in the top field in there, type in my other color, 94, 86, and 35, and then finally 30 in there, and then press return, I get my other color. And again, same thing happens. We get this lovely smooth transition between the two color stops that are the far end of that gradient and that updates in the object. It is possible to do other things as well, like switch the gradient around. So you can go to the reverse in here. There's a button which swaps it around essentially like so. And you can also change the angles. If I swipe across the angle value in there, type in 45, press return, the colors now appear at either end or either corner of that rectangle at a different angle. You can also add additional colors. So assuming that we have from 0% to 100%, we have just countless places where we could click along here and add another color. So if I click here, it adds another color stop. 
The key is that you've got to have your cursor underneath that gradient bar and left click to introduce a new color stop. And from there, you could, uh, of course, you could hover over and left click and eyeball a color in the color spectrum at the bottom in there. If you decide that you don't want a color in your gradient, you can always delete it. So if I click on that, there isn't any kind of really obvious way to do that. I would say the safest thing to do is to click on that color stop in question and drag it away from the bar, leaving the two remaining colors that were in the original gradient. That's all good. Uh, and if you decide that you don't want to go through that hassle again in the future and uh, have to recreate it, you can save that. Uh, if I take my cursor over here and then right click on the preview in the gradient panel, I can choose add to swatches. It will give it a generic name in there. If you wanted to rename it, you can do double left click on there, opens up the gradient options and then call that, uh, say for example, uh, gradient, um, gradient summer greens, for example, and press return. And there we go. It's been named in there perhaps a slightly lengthy name in there, but all the same, you can rename it. So that's the kind of standard way of making gradients inside of InDesign and, and utilize them in your artwork in there. If I then close down the gradient panel, and then if I close down my swatches as well, click away from the object and then go to the next page, I have here uh, another kind of a poster really, and the text and the symbol at the top of the screen isn't really legible. So I need to do something with that. And again, I'm going to use gradients to get around that problem. So if I tap the W key to preview the, uh, the bleed around the outside of my document, uh, click on the rectangle tool and then draw a rectangle out here, the full size, right to the outside bleed line in that document uh, page in there. I don't want no fill and a black stroke. So what I will do, as you can see here, down at the bottom of the tools panel, I'll switch those two around by clicking on the little swap fill and stroke button in there like so. So I now have black fill and no stroke. We have lost the photograph though. I, I do realize that. So we will alter that a little bit later on. I want to focus on the actual colors of the gradient first though. You can now do this, just being careful, I'll switch to my selection tool, in the properties panel. So in the newer version of InDesign, we've now got a properties panel, which is kind of leading us to away from the control panel you used to run across the top of the screen. If I left click in there now, it shows you by default the swatches tab across the top and then all of course the, the saved captured colors in the document. You can go to color and you can also then go to gradient. So if I click in there like so, I can then uh, apply a gradient. So if I choose to apply it to the frame and then from this option in here, you actually pick which type of gradient you want. So I'm gonna choose linear then you see the gradient appear and quite often it will pick up the last gradient that you made in the document. If I then go and left click on the color stop down here, the nice thing is that everything is located in the same pop-up. Well, I'm not saying I'm a big fan of all this being in a pop-up. If it was in a floating panel, that would be really good, but everything's located in one place. It's a more streamlined workflow. So from here then, these new colors, swipe over the cyan in there, type in zero, hit tab, 44, 36, and then again, zero. And then I can go across to the right hand side. Just beware, if you hit the return key to do what you would normally do for the, for the last slider in there, it'll make this pop-up disappear. I'm gonna click in the other color stop in there, swipe over those values. And then for this one, five, hit the tab key, 87, tab key again, zero. And then finally, 23. Notice again now, if I hit the uh, return key in the keyboard, that's exactly what it does. It closes that panel down, that pop-up. So if I go back in there, I can click back on it, go back to gradient in there, and that's my kind of work in progress gradient. Now I will go back to the angle value in there and type in 45 and press return, and then <laughs> make the pop-up come back again inside of there, go back to gradient, and then I just want to affect the balance of power between these two colors in here, and just add a little bit more of that lighter color in there like so. So with that done, that, in terms of the gradient, is fine. I'm happy with that. And press return. We, of course, have no photograph in the background of the, of the beach and the palm trees. So what you can do is go down to the opacity value and change the blending mode. And in this case, I'll choose multiply and you get this nice color overlay over the photograph using that gradient inside of your document. Again, it's all the same kind of things apply. You can save this swatch as well in here. You'd have to go back to gradients Go to the panel flight menu and you can choose add to swatches. It adds it in there. <laughs> to see it, you'd have to click back on the swatches tab across the top and you see that's given it a generic name of new gradient swatch. Press return 
And there we go. That's how you can create gradients the old school way and the new way inside of Adobe InDesign CC 2019. Thanks for watching the video, folks. Don't forget, if you want to see more videos in the future, hit the subscribe button and then click on the bell next to subscribe to get all the latest updates so you don't miss any videos. And until next time, farewell.